And that's when businessman David Fishwick decided to tackle the problem and set up his own bank. His story inspired the film Bank of Dave. And now the original documentary, which followed his journey, has been remastered and put on Netflix. Ian Haslam has been to meet him. He's the minibus dealer who set out to do a better job than the country's top bankers. And could this be the future face of banking? Hello, I'm Dave from Burnley. And he very much still is. Well, hey, welcome to Burnley Savings and Loans. Banker Dave, back with vengeance. Like the original series, now set for re-release. Isn't it brilliant? Netflix are gonna show the series, the Banker Day series. I want to open a tiny, tiny bank. The series came in the wake of the 2008 financial crash and returns with banks collapsing in 2023. Ten years on, and the banking crisis is actually not only starting again, it's worse than last time. Billions and billions of pounds are needed to bail out these banks in America and in Europe. Have we gone back 10 years? There's still not a single high street bank opened. We genuinely need community banks run by the community to benefit the community. Among those to benefit is Diane, who runs Million Ruby's Dog Bakery in Accrington. I got £4,000 from them to get an oven. We wouldn't have got that anywhere else. The business has started growing and we're already talking about the next thing that I need. <laughs> Over to you then, Dave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's got me, hasn't she? <laughs> We've lent over £30 million to thousands of people and businesses like Diane's mm. that just cannot borrow from the high street banks. She's now expanding and she's looking at taking somebody on. To me, that's what makes it all worthwhile. I'm getting quicker now as well, look at that. Listen, you're going to be asking me to, to, to work here. Bank of Dog Biscuits, that's what you could call it. It's the future. That's it. Bank of Dog Biscuits. Just down the road from the dog bakery is Sofa Max. We got from Bank of Dave a loan on a truck. You can't afford to pay crazy interest rates, so, you know, fair and square interest rate like Bank of Dave. Uh, is really important to the business. The big banks have just stopped lending again. You know, how can a computer 300 miles away make a decision about Marco's business? You know, I come and test the settees and they're proper comfy. And you just think, there'll be no problem, he'll pay. And he does. We're not going to get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier this month, Dave's concerns over banking reached Parliament. Because community focused banks and non bank lenders, like the Burnley Savings and Loans, have a vital role to play in ensuring that everyone can access affordable credit. And I nearly fell off my chair because I'm watching Rishi discussing Burnley Savings and Loans. The Prime Minister admitted there needs to be change and he said he's going to do something about it and he's going to come and have a look at the Bank of Dave. Meanwhile, since its release in January, the Bank of Dave movie has taken Netflix by storm. Storm. Welcome to Burnley. And now, Dave, you're off to the USA. Tell me more. Well, it's got a cinematic release in America, and they've asked me to come out there and publicise it. So I've got the old speedos and the mirrored sunglasses. Hollywood, here he comes. Ian Haslam, BBC News. The scene. Uh, Dave, very pleased to stay with us now. So there's a lot of serious issues attached to this. Just on a, on a slightly lighter note, you, the whole Netflix thing... You're about to go on, a, like, a trip to the States to yes. publicise and all this? Yes. isn't it exciting? I mean, the Netflix movie hit number one here in the UK and it's been cinematically released in America. So you're going to do chat shows? And... Yeah, James Corden, I'll be on singing. Terribly, I'm a terrible singer. You can't sing. karaoke? Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> what will the song be? Well, you pick one and we'll sing. What about Phil Collins? You can't hurry, love. No, you'll just have to... Whenever you're ready. <laughs> 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 I'm a terrible singer. Uh, well, it's, I mean, your enthusiasm and your kind of your spirit, everyone can see it. How do people survive what's happening right now? You know, there, there are some very tough times, all factors in a way that a generation of people won't have experienced before. What's incredible is that the documentaries that I've got went out 10 years ago, first time. Now they've been remastered by Netflix. There've been lots of things added and the advertisements have been took out. We've got lots and lots of things, things I hadn't even seen that have been added to it. It took me four years to make those documentaries. So there's things that have been able to be added this time round. And ironically, when they come out the first time, the banks were crashing and failing. The banks are now crashing and failing again. What about that for time? Well, hold on, hold on one moment, because we've had Silicon Valley Bank, we've had a Credit Suisse, and various other kind of concerns, but we should just temper that with the European Central Bank, the Fed, and the Bank of England saying that 
that particularly when it comes to the Bank of England, that the UK banking system is capitalised sufficiently? They, they're saying it's capitalised efficiently, and I agree. However, I tempt that with 15th of March this year, $100 billion got took out in cash of American banks in one week. That's because of the fears of a run yes, on the bank. And that's the problem. The Silicon Valley yeah, Bank. The, the SBB but, uh, Bank. But then that was, I mean, and I don't really want to get into a discussion no. about the banking system, but I just, I think we need to show some responsibility here on this programme to not engender panic. I agree. Because that's I agree, I agree completely. Bank. And in terms of Charlie's kind of question, it is the situation now really hasn't changed in terms no, of that's how the problem. people feel. You're in absolutely their right, Naga. It's, it's people. And they're giving 0% interest or a couple of percent if you're really lucky on a current account. So that's one of the problems that, that we're seeing. So what I would like to do is people become their own Bank of Naga, Bank of Charlie, where they can take responsibility for their own savings. So rather than try and find a bank and get next to nothing when it goes in it, you can then pay down your loans. Like an offset mortgage. Yeah, you can pay a little bit more off your mortgage each month. You can pay down your car finance. You're going to get more interest if you pay down your own rather than try and find an interest rate somewhere else. You, now, you literally become your own bank. So, Dave, that sounds on the face of it. I, I get what you're saying, but if you are that week not able to buy enough pasta because pasta has gone up by 80% in the shops, the idea of how you're paying off things, you, you know, you're nowhere near that. And no. that, that's what a lot of people are facing right now. Yeah, and I agree with that completely as well. I mean, the average loan is 10.71%. Inflation is 10%. You're getting 2% for your money. So inflation, you're just not getting anywhere near it. Your, your, your money's becoming worth less. And, and, and more toward the worthless than the worth So less. You're doing, you've, done, you've done documentaries, you're going out. What Are you still kind of keeping your hand in in terms of helping... Those people, because that was the whole idea of the bank, wasn't it? Yes, Burnley Savings and Loans, the whole idea was to give the best rate of interest on the high street, take the money and lend to people who can't borrow from the high street bank, and the profit after the overheads are paid. But you did that to by give setting up. You did that by setting up the bank, but what are you doing, kind of? Because I know you don't stop. No, that's the problem. In your community, or you know, <laughs> Mrs. What F you says see. that you never ever <laughs> slow down. Um, and what I'm doing at the moment, last night. I actually had a, uh, this is exclusive for, for, for BBC Breakfast, last night I had a meeting with Joe Gideon, uh, the MP from the West Midlands, who um, you saw part of the interview there, uh, Rishi Sunak stood up on Prime Minister's questions last week and said, you know, Burnley Savings and Loans is the way forward. So Joe Gideon called me last night, she said, we've, we've set this, this meeting up with the Treasury Secretary, Rishi Sunak's done exactly what he said he would do, set a meeting up, and uh, we're coming up with a solution that might just help. What we need is community banks run by the community to benefit the community rather than the bonus culture. You cannot have a situation where you've got bankers needing 20, 30 million pound bonuses, banks going bust and people getting scared. It sounds a bit like we need to know what happens when Dave goes to the Treasury and, and uh, you know, comes face to face with the, that place and how they operate. Maybe you'll come and update us. Yes.